and to the pledge, the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And uh, we could remember our men and women in the armed forces uh, today, and also uh, Ron Hess, a local resident, and some of you may know the name Tiny Thompson, class of 54 at West Point, who donated Hannibal the mule. So he passed away, a great loss. Thank you. Tonight we're going to make a, a change. Uh, we've decided at the center, Anne Molina, are you back there? Is Anne back there? Yes. We recognize students in the various schools, whether it be elementary, middle school, or high school. And then the mayor and I started thinking about, what about kids who don't go to public school? They might go to private school, or kids who get services outside of district. They ought to be recognized. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to recognize students with their work that they've done and success that they've made. Joe's going to go first with... And so, just let me add a little little bit more to that. We also, Brian and I and the board, discussed that there's a lot of negativity out there. And we're going to combat it uh, by doing positive things. Tonight's a positive... This is positive about... And what a, what a fitting way to, to start this positive things that go on in this village. Tonight's the first night, and there's going to be many, many more at other village board meetings, but with the children of our community. Very appropriate to start there. So that's what we'll do from now on. So, uh, where's James? These three, uh, like like the rest that are in the room, are very, very, very special people. Some of them I know. Uh, some I, I, I maybe I don't quite. So here's a young man. You graduate tomorrow. Eighth grade. He's the principal of the uh, of the student council. It's a principal list throughout the middle school. That's a 95. Maintain a 95 average. Or high. Or high. If I ever got a 95, it would have been something, boy. That that that's quite an achievement. 2017-2018 Bishop Dunn Scholar Athlete. One of the leading roles in, in Bishop Dunn drama performance of the Adams Family. Tell me about that for a second. Oh, uh, that was a play where, uh, so from the cartoon, The Adams Family, we were just picked, uh, our ELA teacher, who's also our drama teacher, she picked us and uh, we would sign up, and my mom made me sign up because she wanted me to do it. But uh, I signed up and I'm like, oh, I'm not that great, so I'll just be in the ensemble, and then I proceed to get uh, Lucas in The Adams Family. But it was a fun experience. We had a lot of fun. I like the way you just stood up there and just talked. Like I still, my legs still shake. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. It's great. Uh, one of Bishop Dunn's eighth grade representatives in the Scholastic Olympics at Lords High School. Varsity athlete, soccer and basketball. Volunteer, St. Patrick's uh, Soup Kitchen, and the Head Start Youth Program in Newburgh. Walter Serve. That's where I see it. Bishop Dunn in Sacred Heart of Jesus in Hollow Falls. And received a four-year academic scholarship to St. Joseph's Regional High School in Montvale, New Jersey. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Congratulations. You guys can look at these sizes later, OK? I'm just going to. And this is, uh, turn around, look at the camera, shake my hand. All right. Congratulations. Job well done. Thank you. Really well done. And you're only graduating from eighth grade, so you have a, lo yes, a lot of school left. Yes, Thank you. Okay. Leo. Good guy. So, Leo, you're entering the eighth, the eighth grade. Eighth grade. So you have something to follow here. You know, the nuns at Sacred Heart used to say that to us. I remember your sister, I remember your brother, and I expect the same thing. So. Voted Vice President of the Student Council, 8th grade. 
principal's list throughout middle school. That's the 95 and above. And above. That, that's, I, that's great. Altar server, Bishop Dunn and Sacred Heart of Jesus here in Holland Falls, and varsity athlete, soccer. Soccer. Okay. So we congratulate you, acknowledging your exceptional efforts and achievements as you pursue and succeed in your studies. Which says the same thing. Massimo. That's a great name. You're welcome. You know who it's after? Uh, I'm not sure. You're not sure? Okay. It was a general, wasn't it? Okay. You're entering the seventh grade. Yes. So again, you have to you have something to follow, right? You're the class representative to the stu and the student council. Principals list again throughout high school, throughout the middle school. Altar servant, Bishop Dunn and, ha and Sacred Heart. We love Sacred Heart, don't we? And varsity athlete, soccer. Good, 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 good. So we give this to you. Job well done. Job well done. Okay. Want to say anything? Shirt. Okay. Ask them for your shirt. Oh, I keep, that's the part you really, that's the part they want, the shirt. Thank you. Listen, you all have a great summer. Okay? Also, I'll open a book. <laughs> I know your mom. You're going to open up the book. <laughs> the uh, shirt say, Star Student, it says the center. Ann Molina is in the back, and uh, I'm going to hear about it tomorrow, recognizing Ann. And is the founder of the of the center. So what I want to talk about next is that everybody does well in school. We're going to recognize them. Might not be over there. It might not be over here. But everybody has skills and they have lots of strengths, and that's what we want to recognize. So Ryan Flynn, come on up. I talked to Ryan's mom, and he's done some great things in school. He's playing sports. He's done well in school. He's moved up, and he's doing a great job. You ought to be proud of yourself. Some of the other kids who are playing sports that didn't make it is Devin Carter, Tommy Keane, Eden Facer, and John Facer. So we will contact them and make sure that they get their prizes. Very good. <laughs> so we'll capture the other kids and then we'll have it over at the center. By the way, the center is not leaving, we're moving. Everybody's coming up to me in the streets. You guys are vacating. We're not, we're moving down the block to what's up? 274. 274 Main Street. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for Good to see you guys. Thank you. Okay. Any comments from the public on the agenda items? Discussion. Follow up on 23 Tobin's, Tobin's Lane zoning request. Anyone have any follow up? Where did we leave that, Elise? You had asked the board to consider it. Did, you know, I have done a little bit of research on it. I had prepared for the last meeting. Um, the uh, the owner of 23 Tobins is asking for a reduction in the minimum uh, uh, minimum uh, required floor area for dwelling units. He's suggesting 700 feet for one bedroom, 850 for two bedroom, and 1,000 for. Um, uh, a, a three bedroom right now it's 1200 uh, he suggested looking at various towns around the county and across the way um, I took a look myself I'm not seeing anything less than 
really 900, maybe 850, until you get into senior units. And there you'll see 750. So um, there's also another approach which some municipalities use, which is a, a floor area ratio. So it's, you know, some percentage of the um, lot size that then is turned into how big or how small the house. But that's typically for either multiple family units or single family houses. I couldn't really find anything for uh, two families, which is what we're discussing here in duplexes. So it's really, an, it's, it's really up to the village board to decide whether or not you want to address any kind of lowering of your dwelling unit size. And you would do that through a zoning change. And that would require a local law with a public hearing, etc. Well, I'll just, I, I have two, th I'll say two things. As I said at the last meeting, I, I think there should be a, a, uh, a change in the, in the way it's written now because you need 1,200 square feet if you have a one bedroom, a two bedroom, or a three bedroom. For me, I think there should be a gradual increase up to whatever, up to 1,200. Um, I st and the second thing is I think it's an item that we still have to talk about in-house before we get together with you and have a, a, a real change written up. But that's, that's what I say tonight. But so well, see, I, I, I would also say that, you know, we also spoke about some of the vacant buildings around Maybe, is this going to possibly maybe improve them to make it easier to take some of these homes and make them into an apartment or something like that? But there's so much more that I need on answers on this. I wouldn't be ready to, and, yeah. you know, yeah. as you're saying, ha and have another meeting on this. I actually think we have to have a meeting with you, with us in the room. Yep. Yeah. Uh, talk about parking. Yeah. Talk about different things that are going to come up before a law can be written, a code can be written? The parking really wouldn't necessarily be effective because right now you require two off-street parking spaces okay. for each dwelling unit. I don't know that necessarily reducing the size of those dwelling units would affect that, although certainly you could. I mean, at 750 feet, for example, one bedroom, the assumption is you, you only need one parking, but if it's a married couple, then you got two cars. Then you got two cars. Right. So, so that's why I say in some of these buildings that it, it may help, but then again, the parking is going to definitely become an issue because then you're talking four cars. Well, it can't. No, I, if I'm right, no one can convert a single into a double, even with the proper square footage, unless there's off street parking. Well, and it's only a, it's it's allowed in quite a few zones but it is regulated by zoning. So you can't do that. You can't convert a single to a double in all your zoning districts, right. but you can in quite a few of them. Right. So I guess- yeah, we, got, we got to talk more. But, yeah. So let me, I did a little bit of research. <clears throat> right now we got 1,270 parcels in the village. All right, um, whether they all pay taxes or not, some get exemptions because of uh, religious and other uh, ways that they conduct business. So in the R5, in the RA district, there's 185, maybe 190 parcels that this change has the potential to affect. Right. That's 185. Now, will it do them all? No because some of the lots are kind of small, mm -hmm. but that doesn't prevent somebody from buying a lot next to another lot and creating what they want with it. I think we should look into how much impervious surface it would create with the parking. I agree. And if it would take away the whole yard, I mean, is that what we want? And we definitely need to get the parking off the streets, and that mm -hmm. I agree with. But we need a balance there somehow. Um, and it may be how we require the material for the off-street parking. Because um, there are some options out there that would help it not be pervious, I mean impervious. 
um, where it would recharge the aquifer and go right back into the to the ground, which is a good thing. Um, so those are a couple of my concerns right off the bat. Um, and this would only affect the R and the R5A, correct? It would affect any place where you allow apartments or two-family conversions. It would affect any of those houses. Any. So then I... Then Unless the board decides to only allow this, let's say, um, in a certain district that is more urban, like the center of the village, for example. So, right. so with that being said, then 185 isn't a correct number. It can it, increase based on me doing some more research on wherever apartments are allowed. Well, your apartments are 900 square feet right mm -hmm. now. So if you're going to do this, this would affect apartments as well. Right. Because it's single family, you would what you would do here is you would eliminate the current 1200 standard for anything that isn't a single family house for example and all other dwelling units whether they're duplexes three families or apartments would be now regulated under this standard which would be based on that number of bedrooms i mean that i think would be is what is is what's being asked and doing that would not be considered spot zoning, right? So, um, again, it's, it really does need for the board to understand what the implications and ramifications are and then to decide whether you want to do it or not, whether to accept these square footages or perhaps other square footages. Maybe 750 is too low, but 800 is not unreasonable. So, so another question then would be: We have areas in the village that are parking exempt. Mm -hmm. So any of, and that's more or less on the main street corridor. Isn't that commercial? Though? There's apartments above the commercial. So would that allow those areas that are above the commercial residence? be turned into just 900 square foot apartments and no parking is required. So that's, I guess, another thing that we probably would need to think about. Well, the other thing you want to consider, though, is this is an old village. There are probably a lot of apartments that are pre-existing, non-conforming, they might be apartments, duplexes, etc., that don't meet these thresholds now. Uh, so that's another thing to consider, and they're going to continue to be allowed. So okay. it's right. so a lot on the ground. Talk about this. We got a lot of talk to do. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Uh, follow up on Ten Walker Road, the sewer bill. This is an empty house. The uh, water line. Something happened with the water. It was running. Uh, maybe some of it. A lot of it went outside. So they're asking and didn't go to the sewer plant. So they're asking for a reduction in their sewer bill. Um, and so what would be the reduction if we wanted to do that? So what I did, I went back and got the last three sewer bills of when there was not a broken water line. So we have a $308.98, $187.50, and $167.67. The current water bill is 443. That's what they, they, they they'll pay the water, oh, the current sewer bill, excuse me, is 443. So you'll see it's higher. Mm -hmm. um, the current, they had a water bill of 239. So it would be 185%. My suggestion would be to the, take the lowest, the three, the three past sewer bills, take the, low, take the highest one. And that would be my recommendation for a sewer bill, which is less than what it should be or would be by over by $100. So I'm saying 308.98. But you can pick one of the, you can do it, you can suggest whatever you want. We're leaving the water. 
the water stays. Plus penalty. Mm -hmm. They paid the water. Yeah, they paid the water. Yeah. That's what he asked, yeah. Recommendation? I thought we were going to make sure, and you spoke with Kevin, right, about this? Yeah. Okay. Right? Did we ask that? Right. I think we need to make it clear, though, that we're doing this just on the sewage because that's... Meaning not the water. Right. Yeah. Just for the record out there, so as you're listening, TV land. So I'll make, I'll make a motion. I'll second it. I'm sorry? I just want to go on the record that under your code 180 b 2 you are allowed to reduce this. Right. So you're authorized to do this. We have a motion and we have a second. Motion to? Reduce to the three. Motion, on, motion by Trustee Livesey, seconded by Trustee Hour to reduce the sewer bill on this property, 10 Walker to 308.98. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Next, we have a follow up on the vendor sp uh, space in the municipal lot. Our next step, if we were to move, move forward, would be to place an ad uh, in the local paper uh, looking for a vendor uh, for that particular spot. Now, I will say, if I'm correct, a vendor. The vendor can be sell hamburgers. The vendor can sell soda, whatever, you know. And so, uh, anyone interested should read the legal notice if we approve tonight and um, uh, follow those guidelines. So that would be my recommendation to the board so that we could move forward. Uh, we have the village clerk place an ad in the local paper looking for a vendor. Motion. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Trustee Ramos. Why well, I, I do have a comment though. And you know, I, I have a comment. You, you guys are great back there. You do. This has and you, you know, back to that wonderful Facebook, you know, there was a lot, a lot of comments about the last meeting on this. That the village won't even entertain a hot dog cart in the village. It's got nothing to do about hot dogs. It's got nothing to do about ice cream. It's got nothing to do about any of that. It's got to do about business. That's what it's got to do about. It's got to do about opening a business in which, I don't know if any of you went to the businesses. I have. Yeah, I spoke to them. I did. I know okay. Trustee Howard did. Yeah. There's a lot of people in the village that don't want to talk about things. The reason they don't want to talk about things is because they don't want to get involved. Okay? A lot of the people in the stores that I spoke to, a lot of the fire department members go to them. Okay? And you guys are long and faithful fire people. Okay? They're worried that if you get them upset, then they're going to they're not have the business. Another point I'm trying to make out there is if you open this up to vendors, what kind of limitations are you going to have? It's very, very... I have seen nothing legalities-wise that says... Where, where do we sit in the village on this? So if you're going to have a bidding, is that a bidding for one, or is that a bidding for two, or what's, what's the amount of bidding that's allowed on that? And where does it say that you're only allowed one bidder? That's a policy by the village. You, you mean on this spot, Merv? On that whole municipal lot. Oh, you're, okay. It, it's really up to the village yeah. to decide how you want to do that. So we don't even have that decision made yet, and we're making a motion on entertaining something. So that, you're, 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 you're well putting the horse before the cart here. And I, 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 you know what I mean, the other way. But it just doesn't make any sense to make a motion on something when we don't even know exactly what the policy is yet. And that's why I, I have said this all long while, I will not entertain anything. I have read absolutely nothing on this. 
through the village of Holland Falls. Nothing. And I don't even know if any of the board members have. It's my understanding that you can limit permits as a board. Absolutely. Right. So, uh, because you... But, but then again, are you going to say to somebody, hey, listen, we're going to open up a municipal lot to vendors, except for we're only going to allow one. No, no, what I'm saying is... No, but Brian, is that what you're saying? I, uh, I, mean, I was going to say what I was going to say. You can say that we're going to have three permits for the entire year. That's it. So, so or one. Or yeah, let's right. let's. Um, but, can I chime in, please, Mr. So, this Sunday was a great Sunday. Uh, we opened up the municipal lot to the farmers market. Right. Um, it's a great thing, and they bring in a lot of product that other stores in the village sell. But it doesn't hurt the store businesses. What it does is it brings a lot of foot traffic into the village that one day. And it's a great thing. So if we have one entity at that lot, or two or three, whatever we choose, if it brings more people into the village, I think it's a plus. Jimmy, I the board members aren't going to agree on everything, but I don't agree on that. Because i got to tell you again, these businesses here in the village are just making it. They're hanging on. That's what they're doing. And then again, this is no disrespect to you two. I, I want to make that for the record absolutely not. I think you guys are great. I really do. Okay? This has just got to do about opening up something right now inside of a village that is starving for, for even the customers on Main Street to get business. And again, I am one person, I hate selective enforcement and I hate being selective. So if you're going to open this up to vendors, well, golly gee, you better open it up to vendors. And you better say to the vendors that are out there, guess what? We're going to open up municipal lots to, to vendors. You cannot say we're going to open this up to one. You, you can't do that. You can't say we're going to do it to three. I, I just think that being fair, that's not being fair at all. And the more that you open it up to, now that's more business that's going to be taking away from businesses that are trying to pay their rent and trying to pay bills. I mean, you guys want to vote for it, you can. But I just think without seeing something of, of, of a plan of how we're going to go on this. All right, let me, let me ask you something. I, I, I want to zero in a little bit. I don't want to take a, long, a lot of time here. Right now, right now, if this is approved, an ad will go on the, in the local paper. They'll have a deadline to submit to the village. I want to be a vendor and I want to sell um, this product. X. And just so that if you let me sell X, I'm going to give you $1,200 for the season. Because there is a monetary <laughs> requirement. And it comes up here and we decide, okay, for that spot, that's, that particular spot, we're going to let him sell X. He's going to give us $1,200 before he opens up. Whatever the amount is. That's all we have to allow. I understand what you're saying, Joe, but I just think, you know, when we're talking about trying to survive the businesses along Main Street, we're not even going on that right now. We're, we're just moving forward with something else, putting the vendors out there. Does the Chamber have a, a yes or no on allowing this? A yes or no? We haven't really been asked to get involved. I, I would have thought you'd be be involved just for the issue, for, because of the issue. Okay. Thanks. Well, it seems to be a board issue whether or not you're going to grant it. Well, no, it's it's not a board. It's a board's decision. But that's why some of us went to businesses. I would have thought maybe that's what was done. But okay. It hasn't been brought to the chamber of commerce. I could definitely talk to businesses about it. Or as businesses come to me. Okay. I mean, listen, you know. Be, being on this board, folks, there's going to be things that every board member here is going to say that people at home aren't going to like. And I'm not trying to upset anybody at home. I'm just telling them 
my feelings, lifelong resident of the village here in Fort Montgomery and all of that. This is my personal opinion. This is how I feel. Um, that's what it is. I mean, there's decisions that you make. Some people will like them, some people won't. Thank you, Mur. I, I'm glad you took the time to, to you said you, that was good. Okay, so I have already on the ta on the on the on the table a motion and a second, so I have to uh, continue with that. So um, you have that for the record, Gina. Yeah, yeah. May I, may I roll call? I hate this. Aye. Nay. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, we'll go over the uh, legal notice. All right. Okay. Well, at this point, yes, one. Mm -hmm. okay, you you one. can't do that. Yes, you can yeah, do that. Yes, All right. you can say we're going to open up one one spot. Competitive. Is that what I'm hearing? One spot, not three. Okay. Right. So you're going right. to open up one spot to this tonight, and that's what it's going to be. One yeah. spot. Let me let me uh, yeah. le uh, let Folks, me let that, the, that let me let the clerk. That, that's say. not fair. Let me let Regina. Go ahead. I remember it clearly, actually. Not like a lot of things, but I do remember it. The dimensions of the spot are, are down. The exact spot is down. And there's only one. So, so then we're just talking about one spot. Yep. Yep. All right. And listen, I totally agree with you, and I think everyone else does about the businesses on Main Street. Believe me, well, it's, they're it's, all they're, it's, they're, it's, they're it's, three months three but, months away from locking but, the door. But it's, it's not just that. You're, you're going to a very selective area here now. You're opening this up to one vendor. Right. One vendor. That's it. Right. I, I just don't think that's right at all. All right, next, uh, next on the agenda is to approve minutes. The minutes are from a meeting we had on the 4th of June, 2018. May I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Livesey. All in favor? Aye. Oppo opposed? Motion carried. Um, okay, next, uh, I would like to have a motion to uh, take uh, Brent Coogan off probation he's been on probation uh for over a year on his position of laborer if we could take him off that position through a motion he's passed it successfully motion motion by trustee howard is there a second second seconded by trustee ramus all in favor Aye. opposed Aye. motion carried the village board met on the uh 12th of june um, we had interviews for the position of supervisor down at the highway garage, Department of Public Works. Three candidates put in for it in-house. I will tell you that all three candidates were interviewed very well. Questions by the board were good. Um, I was impressed by both sides. Uh, after the third interview was over with, the board talked for about an hour. We spent a lot of time on this one. And a motion was made and seconded and passed 
to uh, offer the position of supervisor in the Department of Public Works to Brent Coogan. So I would like to make that recommendation and uh, with a 26 week um, probation, he can come off before that. He can stay on it for 26 weeks. It's up to us. And I would ask that the salary be commensurate with collective bargaining. And I would also ask that the position take effect, um, I think it's next Wednesday, the Thursday, when, uh, Thursday the 28th of June. That's the beginning of the new pay period. So it'll all, it'll all fit. Discussion or, or motion? I just want to ask one of the mayor one thing. Um, so, no. Okay. No. No. no fair. Sorry, Mr. Governor. Fair question, but no. Okay. But yeah, and I'm glad you reminded me. So the motion is to uh, appoint this uh, a fellow to the position of supervisor. It takes effect on the 28th of June. Uh, according to the, the, the uh, salary, according to the collective bargaining uh, unit. The 26 weeks of 26 probation. weeks probation. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Livesey. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Is everything okay? Sure? Okay. Motion carried. Authorize the mayor to sign uh, the application that um, we have the gentleman uh, working on for the wastewater treatment plant for grants and low interest. May I have a motion to sign that document so we can continue? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Howard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I need authorization to sign the uh, MHE agreement, that's the our engineer, for the pro wastewater treatment plant project um, that uh, we agree it's, uh, uh, with the engineering plans for the project that we have down there. It, it's a, it's, I need to sign the uh, engineer's report plans. I make the motion. Second. Motion by Trustee Ramos, seconded by... Trustee Howard, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. This was on our agenda a few months ago. This is a continuation. We have this company doing a municipal audit services on our gross utility, on our gross utilities to see if we're owed any money. We don't pay him to do this unless he finds money that we're owed by the utility company. So I'd like to sign that agreement again. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Livesey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I would like to have authorization to sign an agreement with Orange and Rockland to replace failed lights. So when a light goes out in the village on one of the street poles, they will replace it with an LED at no cost to us. I make the motion. Motion by Trustee Ramos. Is there a second? Second by Trustee Howard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I would like to have authorization to sign the drainage easement agreement between the Village of Holland Falls and FAD Realty. That's the three, uh, that's the three buildings that were built up between West Street and Clites Avenue. It's been reviewed by our attorney. You have anything you want to add? Yes. Okay. I'm only Yes, that the board, if they're ready, authorize you to sign it, but only upon notification by the village engineer that the meets and bounds description provided by the developer complies with or conforms to the approved plat. We just don't have that back yet. Uh, can you hear that? Can you hear that? Did, you heard it? Yep. Thank you. And to ensure that that's filed with the county, correct? Well, it 
has to be filed with the county. That, that's what I need to ensure because I went and looked for oh, it and I'm I sorry, did not yes. find that. No, yes, it there. has to be it, it has to be filed with the county. Okay. The easement does. Right. Yes. And so it's part of the deeds. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I have a budget amendment that I'd like to propose to the. What? Oh, we didn't do it. Oh, okay, we didn't vote on that. On the uh, drainage easement agreement, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion by Trustee Livesey. Is there a second? Second. Trustee Ramis, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I'd like to have a budget amendment in the year 2017-18, which is uh, obviously last year's budget. Whereas $4,999 has been received from the County of Orange and $5,000 from Charter Communications. Charter Communications is uh, Time Warner or uh, Spectrum. Whereas this revenue has been designated to offset the cost of the Independence Day celebration. Now therefore, be resolved that due to unanticipated revenue from the County of Orange and from Charter Communications, the Board of Trustees approves an amendment to increase appropriation budget A2705-0000 gifts and donations and increase the revenue code of A7550400 celebration for $9,999 for fiscal year 1718. Any questions? That's great. May I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Trustee Ramis. Is there a second? Six. Trustee Livesey, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. We have a, an application here for an uh, event. Summer movies, summer movie night at the park, Grove Park, uh, put on by the Recreation Department. Um, you have the dates there, July 17, 2027, 20, August 3, 10, 17, and 24. Uh, it looks like it might end between 8 and 9.30 over by the pavilion. And they'd like to do a small barbecue uh, on the first and last date. Um, the only thing I'll tell you, the first date will be a small barbecue, but uh, as I've talked, to, Aaron Falk came to see me because he heard I put on a back-to-school barbecue for, for children, all the children, and so we'll still continue that. So on the last night of the 24th of August, we'll have a um, back-to-school barbecue picnic for all the children of the community. So anyway, could we need to approve this. Motion. motion by Trustee Livesey. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Howard. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. The next event looking for permission is Juneteenth Parade. We started this a couple years ago. Um, it will be on June 30. Line up a uh, parade down Main Street, up at 353 Main Street, which, which is by Sacred Heart, 10 a.m and it goes to uh, Memorial Park. Should be over around noon, give or take, if we could approve that. Insurance, yes. Ma'am, sorry, no, it's okay. Good evening, everybody. My name is Brenda Joy Griffin, and I am on the Joseph Committee, and we'd like to clarify, the third annual Laura Lanier Juneteenth Festival will be on June 30th. But we start, we meet at Sacred Heart, and then at 11 we march down to Memorial Park. And at uh, about 11.45 the speeches start. We have a flag ceremony. And at 1 o'clock, from 1 to 3, DJ Dinhurt and her trio will play music and be entertainment. There'll be drummers. There's all kinds of good things to happen. It's a family outing. Ma'am. Yes. I'm sorry, but you have to redo this. We don't have half of that on here. No, it's insurance. Huh? The insurance? Mm -hmm. They wrote. You get finished at um, at Memorial Park from one to No, three. no, it's not here. 
It wouldn't be on. It, Change what would that this, need to do? You changed the scope, huh? No, sir. Well, we changed it because of before we used to go to Royal Park. We're not going right. to Royal Park. No, I know that. Oh, this is, this is not going to be a Royal Park this year? No, sir. This is just going to be at a Memorial Park. All right, let me ask you something. I, yeah, let me ask you something. You're going to, you said, I know you said 10 o'clock meet at Sacred Heart, but you're not going to leave till <coughs> no, 11? We're not going to leave till 11. What's going to happen between 10 and 11? We have to line everyone up for the uh, parade. Okay, then 11, it comes down Main Street, goes to Memorial Park. Yes. And then I, I know there's speeches and this and that. And then what happens at one, around 1 o'clock? 1 o'clock, the, um, the entertainment begins. And the, uh, the trio is called DJ, uh, the DJ Denhart Trio. It's live music? Yes. And then what? Um, dancing, drummers, it's a, it's a lot of different things during that time. Just for curiosity, we don't have to answer, but why, why not at Royal Park, though? You got the pavilion there, you got so much room. Um, I, I do not know the answer to that. This is what's going to happen this time. Yeah. Yes. But this year, next year, we may go back to Royal Park. But this year, we're just going to Memorial Park. I can't answer any because I don't know the answer. We should going to have to... The yeah, this is. I, I, I'm. Let me make sure. I'm sure they are too. We're glad about this. Okay. I I I could have a, an event every week if we wanted to. I, I would support it. But there's more to do to have that. This was good. This is what you needed to do for what you have written. But when we start talking about live music, a DJ, um, it's not a DJ, just live music. Okay, live music. So there's no DJ. No DJ. No DJ. Okay. It's, it's three people. Okay. So, and it's. Okay. So, what I need you to do is to come in tomorrow. Fill out a new one. Okay. Put everything down that you said. Mm -hmm. Attach the insurance to it. Okay. I, I have the, I have all the information. It's back in the And uh, but the, the other thing I see here too is on your. Is this 10 a.m. to 10 yeah. p.m.? Well, that that's really. I but 10 a.m. to noon, 12 p.m. Mean. Well, wait a minute. You don't mean you don't mean midnight, do you? No, it's not. This was from 10 to noon. That was it's, before. It's, okay, you meet at um, Sacred Heart at 10. We get everybody together. We start marching. Mm -hmm. It'll take what 30 minutes to go to Memorial Park. This. Is I understand. No, no, no. That's okay. But All what right. you what you then have to have, have flag, on your... flag ceremony. Yeah. yeah. Then we have. People speaking, talking, speaking yeah. about what is. It might seen. go to three or four o'clock. No, it's only going to go to three because then okay. we, then oh, we three leave. Okay, because this says noon. Yeah. That's what I. That's why I'm saying that you have to okay. do it up tomorrow. Write it up. The okay. clerk will be downstairs. You give it to her. Okay. Do I take it back to the insurance people or do I do it right here? Do it with um, Jim Well, I I I think that covers the insurance, but the clerk. Does not the entertainment, right? Yeah. So that you can you need to adjust the insurance. Okay. That it covers entertainment. Okay, no problem. Now. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a live entertainment fee, but I'll recommend tonight to the board that we waive the live entertainment fee. Thank you. I appreciate. Okay. It. Now, the, the only thing is you have a hundred. And I know it's a guess. I had to do the same thing for the next thing that's on the agenda. How many people are going to come? You know what I mean? But you have a hundred. You have a, a hundred. Now, uh, I'm thinking about Memorial Park. So there's a hundred people can fit there. That's for sure. But not in the road. We're really going to have to be careful. You know? Yes, sir. Especially not especially, but the highway people they speed now. See, they don't go nice. You know? So people are going to have to. Be watching the kids in that. All right. 
we have okay. we have volunteers to help. With okay, them. and I'll be there. And yes, I can help. But uh, fill out a new application, upgrade the insurance. Okay. Uh, we'll waive the. I'll have a motion in a second to waive the entertainment fee, and turn it all in tomorrow. Okay. If you do all that, the motion tonight will be that we'll approve it, It'll provided that the paperwork and documentation is correct. It'll be done, sir. Okay. Work with the clerk. All right. That's your best bet. Okay. We'll do. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, if you need information, I'll good. Students good. Students. That's good. All right. So, if I could have a motion from the board, that the, she'll redo the paperwork. It'll be correct by the village clerk. Upgrade the insurance. And uh, waive the fee for the for the live entertainment uh, that this take place on the 30th of June uh, from 10 a.m. up by Sacred Heart till around 3 o'clock down by Memorial Park. If I left anything out, Annie. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I have a suggestion. So um, you were a little concerned about the, the speeding down there. So I would suggest maybe we speak with the police department and the DPW and maybe a way to possibly th slow the traffic down that day would be to put some uh, cones on the center of the double line. Um, and when the cars come through there, they have a tendency to slow down when they see that. So okay. you think we could do that? Possibly? I think we could do that. Did he hear it? All right, take care. tell him to take care of it. May I have a motion for what I said? <laughs> motion by Trustee Howard, seconded by Trustee Livesey. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. You have that all, right, Gina? There's some requirements now. Okay. All right, next on the agenda is the 4th of July Firecracker 5K and Children's Run. Uh, you have that, bef that application before you. That's on the 4th of July in the morning. Uh, they do have a DJ and speaker, uh, they have music and speakers in Memorial Park. Um, like before, I would ask that uh, we waive the requirements for a fee for music and allow this event to take place. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Ramos. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have 4th of July event forms in front of you, concerts, four different nights, a parade on the 4th of July, activities at Rowe Park on the 4th of July, and of course, fireworks. Um, you have that all in front of you. Um, it has that, all those events I just said. I would also ask that the fee be waived for entertainment permit on all the 4th of July activities. I make a motion. Motion by Trustee Livesey. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Howard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And I might as well say this now with the 4th of July. Um, we are roughly four thousand dollars short uh, with uh, with uh, two weeks to go. Four thousand dollars short with two weeks to go. Any help that anyone can give us, ten dollar, send a check made out to the Fourth of July committee, P.O. Box two hundred. But anything you can give, less than ten, it doesn't matter. Um, we're going to have a car wash this Sunday at Walk Hill Valley Bank. Um, that's what we've had to do this year. We, we, we've had to do these smaller items that bring in some money. So if you need your car washed, um, we're down there uh, at the bank from noon uh, to four. Any help would be, even if your car is clean, bring it down. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, 
property maintenance hearings. One, two, three. We have six of them. Uh, I actually don't, I, I can't say I mind these being on the agenda because it shows that the, uh, uh, we're cleaning up. And so uh, however long it takes, however many have to be on the agenda, that's the way it'll be. Uh, they're all for the same item, which is growth outside. And so I would, as I did last time, if I could put them all together, property maintenance, uh, I'll open the property, I'll open the property, yeah. I'll open a property uh, hearing, maintenance hearing right now at uh, 8 o'clock. It's on 69 Schneider, 117 Center, 138 Merns, 155 Main, 6 Sweezy, and 12 Prospect. This would be the time if there's anyone here, owner or representing the owner or the property, to speak. Is there anyone in the audience? Let it show that no one is here representing any of those properties. Whereas long-standing violations of pro village property maintenance law chapter 170 of the village of Holland Falls code has existed at 69 Schneider Avenue 117 Center Street 138 Mearns Avenue 155 Main Street 6 Sweezy and 12 Prospect whereas the property owner or owners have been given due notice of said violations and have been directed to correct the violations and whereas the property owner or owners we're given due notice of a public hearing to be held by the Board of Trustees on June 18th, 2018 at 7 p.m. to determine whether the violations have been properly remedied and whether to order that corrective action be undertaken by the village to correct said violations at the property owner's costs and expense, to bill said costs and expense to the property owner and to levy same against the property and whereas the whereas the public a public hearing was duly held by the board of trustees on june 18 2018 and whereas the owner owners did not appear and whereas the owners have been have not taken steps to correct the violations and the violations still exist and whereas the Board of Trustees is authorized pursuant to Section 170-6 of the Property Maintenance Law to authorize the Village to undertake remedy such, to remedy such violations at the property owner's cost and expense. May I have a motion to allow that? Motion, motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second, second by Trustee Libsy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? carries. May I have <coughs> bills and claims paid for the fiscal year 17, 2018 of $28,161.54 and for the current year budget 2018-2019 of $181,302.61. Motion. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Livesey. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. I would like permission to continue with the grant that we have for the Hong Falls Marina in that we need to put out an RFP to do the strategy for which this grant will allow. So we can move forward and see where this is all going to go for us. So I need permission. I can answer questions Motion. if you have them. Motion. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? I'll say. Second by Trustee <coughs> Livesey to allow an RFP to go out for the waterfront property to continue with the strategy part of our endeavor. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Do it one more time, guys. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I would ask that we cancel our next meeting, which is on the 2nd of July, 
um, due to uh, events with the 4th of July, but that we have a meeting in the morning at 8.30 on the 2nd of July to just pay bills unless something of an emergency is, ha has to be taken care of. The meeting is to pay bills, but if something else comes up, we'll address it. Motion, Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Livesey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Second. It was 8.30, right? Yes. All right. Uh, this is a very good program starting June 25th, which is um, Monday coming to August 31st, the end of the summer, just before school opens up again. Uh, there's free lunches for children, free lunches uh, up to 18 years, up to 18 and under. Um, no registration, no questions will be asked. No documentation will be asked for. Um, so um, participate, free lunches. Uh, and this will be take place at Row Park at the Pavilion. As we passed earlier, uh, summer movie nights at Row Park. Um, that'll take place uh, all summer. That's also worth knowing about and having our kids go there. So a couple quick things. Uh, the, the Village Water Department, um, oh, you have water? Yes. Okay. The Village Water Department will be flushing hydrants the week of June 24th. So again, that's next week. They'll be flushing hydrants for the week, so your water will turn. Uh, be careful what time of the day you do it. See how your water is before maybe you do your laundry. Orange and Rockland Pole on Mountain Avenue that was hit, looked like it was ready to come down, uh, has been replaced. The old pole is still there. We're waiting for Time Warner and Verizon to come and remove their wires off the old pole. pole. Central Hudson will be starting on Oak Avenue and Mearns Avenue with gas main uh, replacements as they've been doing on Mearns Avenue. That'll be starting very soon. Uh, please do not put air conditioners in windows where the fire escape is. We bring this up every year. Um, and if you ride around, you'll see it. Um, it's kind of, I look at it and I get scared. So don't put an air conditioner in a window where there's a fire escape. And I always have to say this, and some of us have been here long enough to remember that six children died just up the street because there was an air conditioner in the window. So it can happen, please. The uh, geese, I went over to Row Park the other day, and uh, I will I will tell the board. And if and I know you guys have been over there, Merv, I know you were there all the time. And uh, they're really uh, I had to walk on my toes because I didn't want the stuff getting into my sneakers. That's how much there was. You couldn't you couldn't walk. And I'm talking everywhere. I'm not talking the playground. I'm not talking the swimming pool, the basketball court. Forget about playing basketball. The trail, the dirt road. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to do except go on Google. I googled some information. I'm not going to go into it tonight, but uh, I'm going to give this to my DEC guy to possibly call the Fish and Wildlife Services because I think they'll have some suggestions. My, my research showed that if you put a couple swans over there, Swans are aggressive. They'll take. They'll get rid of the geese. Uh, I don't know if it's that easy. It, there's a 50-50. I, I read the. I read the. Uh, the remarks. Some people say it works. Some people say it doesn't. Um, maybe we buy four 
Uh, Mary Jane, you're good at this, right? You could get cutouts, draw us four swans, and we put them in the pond and see how that works. Well, dogs, I'll tell you, dog, a dog is the best cure, if it's a, especially if it's a border collie. That's a fact, but you don't have border collies. Um, we have to do something. Otherwise, we, it's almost like, why do we have a park? Because you can't use it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's that bad. Um, and Rex starts next week. And the guys do go over and they do clean it. But I will tell you, if they, uh, there, there's a standing order I gave them to go over every Friday. But I will tell you, if you go over there Sunday with your little children, you're going to say, geez, when was the last time they were here? That's how fast it comes back. So, Jim, I give this to you. There's some research in here about swans. Um, See, so they, have, they, they have one thing. That it's, it's actually they I saw have, that. They, they have foxes you could put. The only what problem is, is, is the kids are going to be riding the foxes if you put them out there. A fox? There's, there's actual foxes that you could put out there. Well, the closest that, we... And they won't go near... They won't... They'll stay out of that, but the problem is you'll probably have to put about three or four, and that's, that's just not going to work. We put... Um, I remember this. We bought uh, life-size life coyotes. coyotes, foxes, and we put them in different places, and people... People took them. So that, seriously, <laughs> seriously, they, they took them. Maybe swan decoys in the water. So, Mr. Mayor, another. Uh, it's funny, you know, that little story, but it's it's, it's, it's bad. No, no, I understand. Go ahead. So, a good point of fact is um, if we can prevent the geese from getting into the pond itself. That's one of the best ways to deter them from taking up habitat there. We utilize this in a lot of the stormwater management areas that we do. So that may be another option after I speak with the gentleman over at uh, FWS. I'll, uh, I'll see if the DEC can help us out with some of that information. There's another suggestion in there that you put a yellow. Now I guess geese vegetation. can, to, you know, I guess they see color. And if you put a yellow rope up along the lake, or along the pond, around the pond, so high, they think they can't fly up past it. So somehow they leave. That's a 50-50. The, the kids will find that yellow rope. Yeah, that, that, that yellow rope will be in a dugout before you know it. Okay. So serious problem. Some, you know, so see what we can do, Jim. I will Jim. look into it. Okay. Roll Park, uh, the, the pool is ready. We got health approval, so we're happy about that. Um, um, a note, is uh, the chief still over there? Yes. Dear Mayor Joe, this note is an appreciation of one of your officers who took time to help with the installation of a car seat, Officer Yates spent some time to ensure that our car seat for our grandson was installed properly. His concern for the seat being secured and his positive attitude with our challenge, with our challenge uh, of a truck will always be greatly appreciated. We are fortunate to have such officers in the town who don't mind taking a few moments out of their hectic day to assist with such tasks and with such an amazing attitude. Uh, thank you. That comes from Sherry and Pete Cashman. Hang that up, please. Um, since our last meeting, uh, Ken, must it, wait a second. Since our last meeting, um, where I announced uh, the drug raids we had, four houses, arrest. Since that meeting, we've had another one. So when I sit here and look in the camera and say, we're not kidding, uh, we're not kidding. Okay, like I said, either you drive out or we're gonna drive you out. There's a, a really, really nice hotel in Goshen. Um, bed, meals, probably air conditioned, probably TV. Uh, maybe you have to do your own laundry, but it's a nice hotel. One way or the other, that's what's gonna happen. We're not kidding. 
Uh, I, I'd like uh, permission, uh, Ken, you might need to chime in on this, but um, I've instructed the chief to, he went out the other day to um, Goshen. The New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services has a, where is it at, Kenny, exactly? Is it at the fire training? No, it's downstairs at the emergency services. Okay, downstairs at the emergency services. Uh, and by letting, uh, giving uh, tonight uh, the chief permission to sign this agreement, the services include, uh, and this place handles three counties, am I right? right. Well, it's one of nine centers, but this Yeah, it's one of nine centers, but this one does three. The services in include tactical, strategic, administrative analysis, serves as a centralized location for ex uh, assessing advanced technology resources, allowing administrators to make informed crime fighting decisions and the investigator to enhance their investigations. In addition to law enforcement databases, the center has access to powerful online investigative resources. So that's in the nutshell. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to belong and to continue what I just spoke about, which is drugs in our community and other uh, crimes as, 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 they, as they come. Um, I, highly recommend to the board that we allow this to, uh, that we participate in this and we be a member um, um, of this technology that's being offered at no cost thank you so may I have a if there's if you care may I have a mo any questions too now would be the time but a motion for the chief to sign this agreement motion by trustee Howard second second by trustee Livesey all in favor aye opposed motion carried Okay, the last thing for me, guys, is this. Uh, you've heard me refer to the Sue Kelly money. There was a meeting here last week, I think it was last week, uh, that I had put together with the County Transportation Department and Department of, uh, and the New York State Department of Transportation, which this money is being held. This money was ours, it was given to us by Congress uh, to fix Mearns Avenue, Oak, and Berry Hill. Uh, when I came back into office, one of the first things I did was try to find where this money was. And it started to be taken away, parts of it. Some of our money was given to Port Jervis for a uh, pedestrian walkway because we didn't attend the meetings. I can't do anything about that. That's gone. Um, had a meeting here last week and it appeared that all the money on Mearns Avenue was gone. It was allocated somewhere else. Uh, that didn't go over well with me. I've been known to not be happy sometimes. That didn't go over with me very well at all. So we had a, uh, a discussion a very good discussion and 48 hours later I received an email from the state saying our money has, has been restored hundred and sixty one thousand nine hundred eighty three dollars from Mearns Avenue so I'm very happy about that now down the road maybe not too far from now I'm going to recommend that we possibly recommend to you that we take the money that's allocated for Oak and Barry, and also because I'm not sure now we have to do those streets, so that's what I have to look at, and apply it to the Mearns Avenue. I will have to go and see our Congressman Maloney to make that happen. But if we were to get that moved to Mearns Avenue, we would have $330,000. So, um, for tonight, uh, it's for you to know that we do have our money back. 161,000. We never did lose the money for Oak or Barry. So we'll continue down the road of fixing Mearns. Um, the folks on Mearns Avenue uh, can no longer wait. Uh, I don't know, does anyone here live on Mearns? No. Uh, Mearns Avenue is deplorable. Um, it's uh, outrageous. It's, uh, it's not bad, it's more than bad. And so to ask the folks up there in this one area 
from Barry Hill nor uh, South to the dead end to ask them to wait one more year. Um, I, I, for me, I can't do that. Um, so I would go, I'm going to recommend tonight um, with some research research I did this past few days. Uh, we have a contractor. Um, if we go pick up the tonnage of blacktop with our truck and our, our men, come back to Merns Avenue and dump it, he will spread it and roll it. So he does everything. We just have to go get it and bring it to him. And what it will do is to put a very, very thin layer of top down so that the folks up there can bear it until the spring of 19. Um, the cost of that is around $3,000 for the blacktop, our cost. And he will charge us $1,600 to grade it and roll it. So that's what I would ask that we do mm -hmm. through a motion. And that'll help the folks up on Merns Avenue. They've waited long enough. Mm -hmm. So if I could have, if you're prepared to do that, it would be good. I'll make a motion. Do me okay? Second. Motion by Trustee Livesey, second by Trustee Ramis. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you so, so much for that. Mr. Howard? Yeah. Chief, we, Chief Scott, what do we have? 95% of all the uh, meters are now fixed. <laughs> so they're all, all ready to go, right? Great, thanks. On tomorrow, June 19th at 7 o'clock, there's going to be a thing called uh, Patterns for Progress. They're going to talk about the village and the town, what makes us up, and do a lot of data so that we can have a discussion about how we're going to use this information to grow into the, in the future. Um, I want to again commend people on the banners. They look great up there. A lot of people have commented about that the banners are just looking really good. It does a nice thing for the military. It also makes us have a closer relationship with West Point, which I think is important. And that's what I have. And again, the center is not gone. We're just moving up the road. All right. Thank you. Mer? I spoke with the town today on, uh, you know, not to bring this up, because we've heard it before about the Old Guard Hotel. And I know we went through our property maintenance violations again tonight but I, I just you know I, I think the village we have to really decide what we're doing here because they're pointing fingers at us they could only write out the tickets it's up to us for the code of how far to enforce that code and what to set out as the fines and when I spoke about the old guard hotel again anybody that have, has seen it along 9w that's horrendous Okay, so we're getting our violations again tonight, and we're going after these people, and we're telling them to correct their problems. But you know, again, we're talking about people that have high grass on their property and to correct their problems. We've been talking about this old guard hotel continuous now, and it's over there. And now, if we go past the ambulance corps a little bit. I don't want to mention this building, but that's starting to look horrendous down there. And that's one entrance coming into the village of Howland Falls. That's the first thing they get to see. And then when you're driving down 9W, that's what they get to see. We, we, we have to set up some kind of meeting, and we have to be able to say, look, you know, as we spoke on the phone, it's going to be $250 a day, or it's going to be whatever the fine is going to be. But we have to figure out something on this. We, we can't just continue on meeting after meeting after meeting and letting that building just sit the way it is. It, it's just ridiculous anymore. It, it really is. I was told by um, someone today that they corrected some of the problems up there. They now, had a property maintenance. They, had a, we, they, were, they were here one night. I, I understand. I assume that might no, be I, I understand that, but correcting the problems would be tearing down the building. No, no, no. I understand what you're talking about. But, but, yeah. what, but what I'm saying is, again, tonight, right. there's no violations. There's no nothing. 
And the reason why is because they don't see any violations. So they corrected the violations that they have. So now at our next board meeting, you folks are going to see the Old Guard Hotel. And it's going to have a property maintenance violation again. And then whatever the violation is there, they're going to correct it and then it's, the problem is going to disappear. But it's not disappearing the main problem of that building still standing. I know for the fire department they've been up there, they've had their, was it the Hound Falls that was up there? Okay, so, so they were both up there. I, I don't think there's any interest of going back there for anything. Um, it's just, I, I, I don't know why, and I'm going to say this in this way, this is being allowed to be standing like that. I don't, I don't care what the procedures are anymore. I mean, it's just, it, 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 it cannot be the excuse of the procedures. Let me, let me ask a, a question and, mm -hmm. one, and one comment. What, what is the latest with the building coming down? The last I heard when I spoke to the engineer, the village engineer, was that he and Bruce had met with the developer. The developer was submitting a report about hazardous material in the building, which the developer has to provide a plan to the building inspector that the building inspector approves so that they can take the building down for the dem so that he can issue a demolition permit. That that was the last I All heard. Right. So on that issue, mm -hmm. on that request that was given by the engineer, I guess, to the owner, to provide a list of anything, any materials that are part of the building that are hazardous. Yeah, okay. it's, a, it's a report. It's okay. a, some it's a type of hazardous okay. report. Would you, you, as the attorney, call the building inspector tomorrow and ask him for that document? If he says he doesn't have the document, well, you, you know, you're not going to tell him what I would want you to tell him, but I'll, I'll, I'll give it your judgment. We, we need it. That's number one. My comment is, Elise, what can we do to get that building down? Can the we? The building inspector is there can anything condemn the building. For the building, and what if he doesn't want to do that? Because he'll turn around and say, no, the engineer should do it. Well, there are it's, only it's, so many reasons you can condemn a building. Yeah. So often, uh, if there's an obvious problem, the, uh, the roof has collapsed, there was a fire. It's clearly and unequivocally uh, unsafe. The building inspector can do that. Often, however, what the bu building inspector will do is ask for an engineering report that says it's structurally unsound so that it can be taken down. But, but, but what, what is, I mean, it, it Anybody can look at that building and say it's structurally. I mean, it, it doesn't take okay. it doesn't take anybody with any knowledge to look at that building and say this thing's going to collapse. Who, who takes it down if it's structurally unsound? The village. The village. You would have to take it down, pay to have it taken down. We would have to pay for and the to you have would the have report to, done okay. on the hazardous waste. Uh, no, first. that's well. If they don't have it generated. Yet. Yeah, yeah you're, not you're right. If they do not have that, it generated yet, then important. we're going to have to have a report done. Yeah, so we're going to pay for that, that and then once <coughs> okay. that is done, then they would come up with some type of a monetary figure. Okay. Okay. So okay. 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 The village is not going to spend its money for an engineering report to take it down, cart it away, and everything else. So, right. What is the name? Who is the person you deal with? Is it Greg? You, you do, yeah. Uh, I can email him. No, no. Is that who you deal with? Who do you deal that's with? That's who deals with. Me? No. Okay. My understanding is that's who's been dealing with everyone. He's the owner's representative. Okay, so he that's deals. That's my understanding. Okay. Okay. <coughs> email. Please email. I want you to call Bruce. I still want you to do that. Okay. Email me. Even though I have it downstairs, I, to, I'll find it faster if you send me an email. I am going to call him, and I'm going to jump out in front of my headlights, and I'm going to tell you all right now, I'm going to get the building down. 
The building will be down. Well, it's not just that building. It's the other building now, too. Well, it's, I'm talking about the Puerto Rico Motel. No, I, no, I understand that. And, and the other problem that's starting to arise here is, and I, I'm not going to put the name out there, but everybody <clears> knows <throat> what I'm talking about, is the other building. Are we going to go into the same... I'm sorry, Merv. What other as soon building? As, as soon as you go by the high school, you can't miss it. Pass the ambulance for it. Oh, okay. That's a different issue. No, it's, that's it's, a different it's issue. It's a different issue, but it's becoming a issue now. It's you become it's becoming you, an you, issue. Are you talking about the motel? No. It goes. Oh. It's it's becoming an issue where people are driving down a highway now. They're looking at these buildings and they're wondering what in the heck is going on along okay. IW here. With the with the old right. rottening buildings. And right. I gotta tell you, I'm down in Rockland County and when I talk to people and I tell them where I'm from. This is conversation that I hear. I, I hear about the old rotting buildings along 9W. And I got to tell you, it, it's just like enough of that already. All right. Okay. 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 I, I Now I know. Okay. So, I'm sorry. So, okay. now, number three. Okay. Well, no, number three. Number two, you're going to get me the phone number. Number three. While you're on the phone with the building inspector, would you ask him to give you the owner on record of Nicole's? 11 main the Coles catering hall 11 main street <coughs> I can find and that also uh, okay and also would because this is how it has to be done and it's a shame because it's like you don't think he sees that you don't think he sees that ask Bruce to go down on behalf of the villages request we're requesting he go down and see if there's any violations there and if there are, would he send them out and CC us? Okay. You know, you got to remember, you got you got our day coming up soon. You got all of this, all, all kind of tours coming up. And you know, it's it's a lot of people where they're going to have their children going up to West Point, and this is going to be their view. This is this is where they're going, and this is their view. And I have to tell you, and I, I use the word embarrassing. That's what it is anymore. It's embarrassing. It it, it really is. Um, anyway, besides that point, I'll okay, Elise, I'm, I'm sorry, but okay. Elise, can you just no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, just to add one more sentence to the mayor's requests. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could ask the building department if they have any applications or permits um, that Nicole says I apply for. In other words, building permits, you know, okay. demolition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This way, you know, we'll have an understanding if they are starting or trying to do some work, I guess. Okay. So I, I had two more things, and this, this will be pretty quick. So the Great Grace Baptist Church Vacation Bible School, I just want to put this out there. This is a great thing. Children age 3, grade 6. The date is July 9th through the 13th, time 6.15 to 8.45. There's contest, fun songs, and a penny march. Teens 13 to 19 years old. The date is July 16th to the 20th. Time is 6:15 to 8:45. Same thing. They're going to have contests and everything, and that's on 54 Old State Road here in Highland Falls. It's all free of charge, and it has air conditioning there too. One other thing I want to talk on real quick, and I think this is again that the village board we should really start setting up a meeting on this. I've been bringing up consolidation. And a couple things that I'd like to do with the board is I think that we should really start looking into some areas of what the possible savings would be if we were to consolidate in different areas. So at least we could have a, a relatively a, a good idea on is this going to be saving or are we going to be spending more money. And, and I really think right now, Joe, you mentioned last time, Mr. Mayor, some of the sh services that we are already sharing. Quite a bit, yeah. So I think there's other areas that we ought to look into now and saying to ourselves, and the reason that I'm bringing this up, okay, the house that's in front of my home has a for sale sign. The house that's next to that house has a for sale sign. The house that's on my street to the right of me has a for sale sign. Two of the houses behind my home has a for sale sign, and the house, the third house up to the left, has a for sale sign. That's bad. 
that's bad. And actually, one of the houses that's straight across the street from me, way back, I was interested in that house. And when I asked the realtor the price and what they're paying and everything on the house now, no way. So I really think that we ought to look into this area now of what we could, if it's there. You know, if it's there, then we ought to go after it. And you mentioned about the park and everything else and the events. And as the mayor is saying, like 4th of July, you didn't mention one thing, how special this 4th of July is for the reason of this is the 50th. And this is a Thank big, you. this is a, this is a big occasion. I mean, not only is it a big occasion, it's a big for a lot of the families that have been here over 50 years. I know the Livesies have been. And I know there's many more that have been, but it's it's a big it's a big celebration for the village of Howland Falls, and if you do have some extra money, it would be great to put it into the to the event, because I know everybody's here and they're all along Main Street, and um, that's it. Thank you. I support the consolidation too, because a lot of people are coming up and they're asking questions I can't answer them, which may not be unusual, uh, and the rumors are flying. The, the rumors are flying, you know. They don't know. They don't know what's going to happen. What's going to happen if you consolidate? What's not going to happen? And is the village going to disappear? So I think we really need to take a look at consolidation. What's it going to cost us? Are we going to make any money out of it? What do we get out of it? Because right now it's up in the air. Just a key, uh, key point on the consolidation. Um, we can come up with whatever study whatever figures that are, that are in our study but if the town does not accept that study they're going to be the ones in charge of it so they can create and I've been down before I was on this board to many meetings <clears throat> about consolidation and questioned uh, the town about the report that was generated and they can't agree to that report so you know I mean we can do what we can to come up with figures, and they may all sound good, but if the town decides that they, well, that's a great document, but we don't, we're not going to go with that, and the village, you can dissolve and do whatever you want, that's fine, but this is what we're going to do. So they can create districts, which, again, really does nothing except divide us, because if you looked at districts, what would we be looking at? Uh, sidewalk districts, uh, lighting districts. Um, why would uh, Andiora Park want to have to pay into a sidewalk district if they have no sidewalks there? That would make a sidewalk district in the village, and the residents in the village that have sidewalks in front of the house, pay more money. Uh, same with lighting. Um, you know, we have a lot more lighting up here. So then they do possibly in Andiora Saturday Grove. Um, are they going to pay the same amount in the lighting district or the sidewalk district? So th there's definitely a lot involved that we definitely need to talk about when, you know, a as we get this consolidation report. No, I understand that, Jim. You know, we're going to find a lot of negative points. But no, those aren't negative. Those no, are no, just... No, 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 I'm saying, but you will find a lot of negative and you're going to find a lot of positive. But it's, it's up to us and, and to, up to the people. I'm sure the taxpayers, it's your money, you know, to say, hey, you know, this is... This looks good. And just for like an example, you know, if you take Rope Park, okay? Rope Park is, the whole community is using Rope Park, okay? But it's divided, the money going into Rope Park. Is there a way to take Rope Park, because it's being used by all, and, and have it so it's being paid in one sum from the grass cutting to the to the sports events, to the maintenance, to the buildings, to everything that's up there. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, you, you, you have to be able to sit down and there's going to be negative parts where it's like, no, nah, this ain't going to work at all. But you may, you may say, you know what, if we do this here and take this out, this might just work. Because, you know, again, I'm not moving. I'm not moving out of here. But I'm not a, I'm not... I'm not an apartment guy. I, I got to have my house, you know, and uh, I don't want to move. And, and honestly, it looks like when I look outside and I see these four sale signs, not just there, you got everybody sees them, you know, and it's just like, okay, enough of that already. I but think, anyway. I think you have a great point about the parks, and I believe yeah. the mayor has asked the town 
numerous times about taking over the parks but the, for the, the point yeah. that you're making that yes not only the village residents enjoy those parks but the whole town does exactly. and, and yeah. I think it would be um, fair um, if that came out of the line on our town taxes that we all share so uh, and I believe that you know we're up here to be good stewards and make sure the people have the proper information when we move forward and let them know whether they're going to save money or whether they're going to pay more and that's that's our responsibility and that they have money you know that's yes. what you got to make sure is that I, they have money to pay their bills here you know because yeah. i got to tell you from the regular bills that come inside of a home now i mean it's just like you got to be kidding me I'll agree. I'll agree. It's the luxury of owning a home. I want. I, mean, I, I, I want. A, I want a TV antenna again. Do they still work or no? <laughs> I'm yeah. mad I took mine down. Huh? I you know. Um, so just a couple of things that I was going to touch on, but uh, you did, Mr. Mayor, about the brown water. Um, I got numerous uh, calls yes, uh, about the brown water this past weekend. Um, we're definitely working on it. They're going to be flushing, so that helps alleviate some of that brown water <clears throat> issues that are out there um, but this is something that's gonna take a lot more money and again we're back down to money uh, mm -hmm. the infrastructure is old um, there's a lot of uh, old pipes and when you get a uh, heavy draw on the system whether it's from a fire um, or uh, them obviously doing the cleaning of the hydrants uh, you see that brown water so you know we're gonna have to think about infrastructure in the future uh, another thing that some residents came up and had concerns about with me and I let them know that I would let the uh, board know um, they're very concerned about parking on these side streets with the uh, emergency service vehicles that have to try to navigate through these small side streets Yes, which again brings me back to the parking and uh, thinking about the uh, making smaller apartments, which brings in more cars. So, you know, and I, and I, and I try to explain to, the, to a few of the residents, you know, if you have parking on one side, you're going to make everybody on the other side of the street mad at you. And, that, and that's the bottom line. So whether, and then wh whose side of the street are we going to have parking on? So it, that, that would be a tough question, but I guess it's something that, you know, we can look into. But I don't know if that's the solution, just that's parking a, on one side. Um, another uh, issue that some of the residents brought up were some stop signs that they feel should be yield signs. Um, should I speak with the police commissioner, Brian, I guess, about these locations? <laughs> I would think it would be the other way around. You know, Jim, I just want to say Surprise. something real quick. On my street, down the road a little bit, this is a true story, everybody, true story. There's a lot of kids that are down there, and they're all riding their bikes and those little scooter things or whatever they are. They're riding the scooters and everything, and I go out to my car, and I see them all out there, and they're just having a ball, okay? They're all over the place. But this is the second time probably I brought it up at the meeting, but I went up to them, and I said, no, 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 you guys, you're not allowed past this line. You can't go past this. And they're like, oh, we're sorry, Mr. Lindsay. I know we're not allowed to pass this line. I get in my car, they're past the line. So I walk over and I said, hey, you got to get back from that line. As soon as I went over to my car, walking over to my car, this car, four kids in it, went flying by. Flying by. I couldn't believe it. If those kids were where they were, they would have got hit by this car. I immediately called the police department, I called the police department, I told them the description of the car, the kids that were in the car and everything else. I don't know what happened with that, but I still urge everybody in here, call the police department. Call them. And I agree with you. I think it would be the op but I respect what you're saying, but I think it would be the opposite. You know, if we're going to talk about water, Jim, we're also going to have to talk about Fort Montgomery. When they're flushing a hydrant, call us, let us know. That would be a great point. And, and talk about the size of that tank up there. Is that tank sufficient enough? So, so a lot of work to do with that. So, Trustee Allen and I spoke about this. So, first of all, let me address this uh, brown water this weekend. Was There was a fire, 
it wasn't the pipes. That's number one. Uh, they had they they opened up a hydrant up on uh, up on uh, West Street. Uh, Ken, so eventually, when there's brown water, uh, the dispatcher downstairs. The dispatcher downstairs put it puts an e-alert out. I, I I I received one about dirty water. I don't know the time frame after the water became brown and the e-alert came out. Where I'm going with this is this. When the dispatcher hears that a fire hydrant, and she'll know, is open because of a, a fire or even training, she hears she gets that 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 dialogue downstairs. Put the E alert out right then. What? No, no, no. I'm, yes, but I'm saying you'll hear it. You'll hear the chatter when the fire department opens up a hydrant. You'll hear that. You hear all that chatter going back from truck to truck. So we don't hear anything. All right, well, we need to put the E alert out as soon as possible. And I'll tell the fire department they have to so eventually. I know there's a fire, so you got more important things, but somebody's got to have the responsibility to call in. And Mr. Howard is right. Uh, we're going to talk about water. Fort Montgomery has to step up to the plate and build a tank down there. Because when they have high flows, it takes our water from the trailer park, which is the last thing in the village, and it starts doing this to it. And we start picking up the sediment in our pipes. So that has to be addressed. I actually thought it was addressed in, 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 in the, in the uh, agreements of the look. Um, so, okay, so yes, as soon as we know there's brown water, let's put it out. You and I will go down, talk to them about this, uh, Brian. Yep. So I don't have anything from the DEC tonight, but I will next. Okay. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. So. I talked to you about the brown water. That this time it was a, they opened up a hydrant. And they had to. It's like when Fort Montgomery uh, Fire Department opens uh, opens up a hydrant, whether it's training or a fire. We need to be notified. Rich, maybe could you take could you ask them to notify us that they're going to open up? You know, they know when if there's training. Now, fire is a fire. I understand. Uh, the other thing is, I just wanted to mention, uh, we met, uh, some of us met with uh, cell tower p uh, folks, wireless communications. Uh, we are going to have a cell tower in this community. We're going to be able to communicate with one another. <laughs> it's 2018. Um, and on top of that, we're going to make some money. So uh, that'll all be in the near future. Correct? Yes. Be with us okay. Again. Public hearing. We'll go through all the steps, then we'll be able to use our cell phones. Anything from the audience? Jose. Uh, Jose Sierra on 65 Slider. Uh, topographic surveys in. I want to see where we stand now. Where? What's my next step? Well, I, I just asked a day or two ago the clerk if the topo map was in. She told me yes. Um, so now the ball's in our court. And so I would like the board and our engineer, and possibly if we need you at least to have a meeting. On the the issue is the also is a survey easement and a survey of the proposed easement. When I spoke with the village engineer, he said, and I put this in the language, that the easement is going to vary depending on, you know, the, what, what they're going to need. So I just have to reach out to the village engineer now that we have the topo and discuss that again with him. It may not... Vary in what form? What do you mean by vary? It may be sometimes it, the village engineer suggested that it might be 20 feet, less, more because of the and then he needed to see a topo to determine that. So I'm going to reach out to the village engineer again and pin that down a little. Please do, because I honestly feel that I shouldn't have had to do the survey to begin with. He knows where he needs to put that pipe, how high, how low. Mm -hmm. No homeowner should have had to do that. 
I said well, that I, he should I, I'm gonna make, reach out. It cost me an additional five hundred dollars to, do, the to do that survey when I could have had it done for a lot cheaper. Okay. And they built his first tax me. So I, I'm I'm just getting a little frustrated here. Mm -hmm. Like is the insurance notified yet of the damage? When is the insurance coming out to look at my house for the damage inside the house? I'm not getting I'm, I'm doing all this, I just don't know where to go for. And I, 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 I apologize, now you're talking about insurance? Well, I mean, who's paying for the damage inside the house? Uh, did you put a claim into the village? I put in, I put in letters of everything that's been damaged throughout the whole four years. I've been submitting pictures, letters, everything. Okay. All right, let me follow up on the insurance so, part. Saying the water's all coming in the house. Yeah. I've called the village, I went down to down the town hall and ask them to come out because there's mold and stuff like that on the side of my walls. I, I will follow up about the insurance. I don't know where that is. I don't know where that is. Uh, at least I'll follow up with the engineer to see if he needs anything else. If he doesn't, it's a, you know that would be good. Um, and then we'll have a meeting with the engineer and, and decide that what we're going to do and what our options are in doing it and when. Somebody get back to me, or um, a point of contact. Can I have somebody as a point of contact? <coughs> it, it it can be me. So uh, I just want to make sure I have it all when you come, because I don't want to be embarrassed either. You've been waiting. I know. I am. I know what. Right. I know. I, just, I know the whole story. It hasn't rained so. forever, and it's hot out. You can go to my house right now. My whole basement is soaked. No, it's going into the sheet rock, it's coming through the concrete. I replace rugs, I replace desks. I mean, it's just, I'm constantly four comforters on my floor to prevent the water from going any further into my house. I can't do laundry without stepping into that. Like, it's, it's just a mess down here. I'm, you know, four years I'm living in this mess. Got it. I will. Okay. This, will this, this information will not take long at all. Okay. All right, guys. At all. Good enough. Okay. And I will call you. All right, appreciate that. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, Chris Barzo. Uh, I'm taking uh, over where uh, the center was, and I'm going to be opening up a restaurant there. Ah, uh, here they service restaurant. Yes, so I wanted to come and introduce myself. I, I met uh, Brian already. Um, I also wanted to uh, let you guys know that I'll be today at the end donating $500 to your uh, July 4th. Um, and I'm also going to be for the Juneteenth. I'm going to be donating yes, a bunch of uh, ices and things for that, so they can cool down. I don't know if I have to go through any permits. I do have a nice truck which I can pull up and give free ices out to whoever's attending that. I'll do whatever permits I need to. But I just wanted to thank you guys for welcoming me to the community. So wait. Yes. Uh, so I'm told hot dogs, hamburgers. It's uh, actually a concept called cream. Carnies. Uh, so it's yeah, it broader stuff. <laughs> but it's uh, it's a concept called start Carnies. That, it's all carnival based food. So it'll be uh, deep fried Oreos, cheese steaks, uh, cotton candy, uh, you name it. All kind of carnival stuff. It's a new concept. Uh, yes. Yep. Correct. Uh, depending on the plan, I'm not sure how many seats they'll be available. Uh, we'll suggestion only because I'm old and I love antiques. Yes. Keep that place as much as you can. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's going to be modified. Because there's character in it. Correct. There. It's going to be modified and it's going to try to rec uh, to recreate a old so soda pollard yeah, type. You got the so, you got character in there. Yeah, definitely. But I also wanted to say to the community, you know, um, you know, you guys here sound like you have some struggles, um, but as an outside investor, there looks like there's a lot a lot of opportunity. Uh, so maybe that'll be a little bit of a ray of hope, you know, uh, be the phoenix and reborn from whatever ashes you're well, in now. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, you're correct in what you hope for, because we all hope for that. Yes. But here, there's something going on. Mm -hmm. I happen, I think I know what's going on, but I'm just going to say right now, sure. there's something going on. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is, here you're coming in. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a new laundry mat opening up. Absolutely. We have a new bakery coming the mm -hmm. first week in August. I actually tasted some of the goods today. Okay. I hated to do it. <laughs> um, and um, we have a large building at the north end that was sold and now it's being gutted and it's going to be for rent. Um, there's another one. Something is happening. Absolutely. Okay, positive. Yep. And more is going to happen. Absolutely. I have a grant to announce, but I'm going to wait to announce it. But I have a grant that it's going to help Main Street tremendously. Great. And I'm going to make that announcement another time. Um, 
um, but again, something is happening in a positive way. So we appreciate. Where do you live? Uh, I live uh, right in New Windsor, but I'll be opening up down here on three twelve. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming here. Okay. Great. I think. Thank you. <laughs> okay. How much? Uh, let me get you to say that sure. again. How uh, much? Five hundred to the uh, select board. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Mike Gonzalez, we spoke. Uh, meetings ago uh, in regards to my fixing up my my yard and my next door neighbor's yard uh, from the water that comes through from the streets if the town don't take this wrong but if the town doesn't want to get involved I would like to fix it because when you drive up the street the yards look decent but in the, between the two houses it looks like a war zone because of all the dirt rocks, the gravel, everything that runs down the road, the water grass that's growing. So i just like to have an answer because I'd like to start tomorrow and bringing in dirt and putting in the drain system myself to the park in Andorra. But I have to, it has to be done this, this by the end of this, this spring, this summer, because it, I can't deal with another winter with water running again. And I, I'm, I'm being very, very easy, very light trying to get it done. I'll do it myself. My neighbor, will, will, we're going to split it. I just want to, because i got to bring in filled dirt because I'm three feet deep, and i got to bring in three feet of dirt from the front to the back. Sir, uh, uh, this is uh, my to-do list uh, for the village, and if you looked at it, you'd see a lot of, there's a lot of jobs, and you're actually on here. It doesn't mean you're number 18. You just happen to be number 18. Uh, on the page here, but it goes up to like 26 projects. A lot of them are sidewalks, drainage, roads, the FEMA walls over here. These guys know the names what I'm talking about. Let me let me get with the board within a couple of weeks I, and I, tell I, them, and maybe I, even have them come down here and look. But I understand. But the thing is, I'm willing to fix yeah. it myself. Well, let we'll, me say this we'll to you. We'll take care of me, if, myself, and the next door neighbor. We will. We will split our costs between doing it ourselves. Well, then, then let me say this. Because it has uh, to be done because it's like you're talking about driving up and down the roads and you see garbage. That's what it's looking between our my house and my neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. we well, this it, this is on private property. Yes, it is. You you and your neighbor. I don't know who owns more or less or whatever. Um, I mean, can if he want if they want to do it that you can't reconstruct the road. I won't even touch the road. You know, the problem I mean, is, do we, is in the last twelve years, people have raised their driveways so that water can't go in. Certain certain areas have drains put in, but it can't come from the top of the hill that way and the top of the hill that way and come to my yard and drain. I mean, you saw the pictures. I had ducks in the, in the summertime there, and it went every time it rained. And it's, and it's just getting deeper and deeper. Well, in general, private property owners can do what they will with their own property. Um, if you're working in in like a right of way, either a village right of way, no, no right -of -way. or a county or state right of way. No right -of -way. No right -of -way. Um, the other issue, of course, is that if you fix a drainage problem on your property and it's now on your other neighbor's property, then your neighbor, there could be a trespass. But again, it's a no. it's a private matter. Right. Um, I this is it, Regina. This is this the issue with the collapsed? No. No, it isn't. Okay. No, no, no. So, that's uh, another uh, one. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just you have you and your neighbor want to fix a problem on your property. Right. Based on what I'm hearing, I don't see a problem with that. Private property. Okay. I'm, I guess I'm not sure why you're. But I'm going to give you a heads up. Well, I'm well listen. Give, why I'm does give you a heads up. The, well, because well because the water that comes into the yard that causes this large pond, a little small pond, whatever you want to say, comes from the village road. So it's your it's your water. Okay. okay. That was why he he had interest in coming to talk to me. Yeah, okay, so I, again, it's your property if you and your neighbor yeah. want to 
fix a problem? Yeah, there's no there's no right of ways. It's clean property. It's clean as far as he owns this half. This guy owns this half. It, it flows right to here. They want to put a pipe, a storm drain, a pipe, and it goes out into the you know the uh, the uh, playground, the field behind the houses. He has permission from the on on the park association to allow the to the pipe the water out into that field. Mm -hmm. So it's it's. But the thing is, I need from the town. You have to send either Kevin or somebody from the water, de water department to mark out your water lines are in my backyard. Yeah, so I am. All your water lines that no are problem. across the street. No problem. All I need to know Any the utility system. lines, you'll know. All I need is marked out. But just to let you know, you keep saying town. This would be the village. Town. Village. Yeah, town. yeah but it's. No, but, uh, really. <laughs> We all live in the same area. So no, we do, but when yeah. you're talking this year, though, yeah, well, yeah. no, you'll know where the village. you'll know where the markings for the water and the sewer will be made. So you might want to just double check with the building department because you're going to have to obviously you're doing underground or you're digging up. I'm only digging a trench to put the pipe in. Well, the state law still states that you know once you start digging, you have to you know contact the ser uh, services. And they will come do the mark out for you. They don't have a problem doing that, just that. like Kevin mm -hmm. will come. Right, just like the but you have to contact not only the, the water and the sewer, but the gas company. There's no yeah. gas there. No gas in Ontario. Nope. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Is there anyone else? If not, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll motion to adjourn. Motion by Trustee Howard. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Mer uh, Lizzie, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you so much.